In the aftermath of a disaster, such as a tornado, purifying drinking water may be a priority. The quickest, safest method is probably going to be boiling. Here's how to make an effective stove out of salvaged materials. Recently I posted a video showing how to make a biomass stove using four concrete blocks, a tin can, and a gas stove eyelet top. A couple readers commented they had trouble finding a three-sided block. Could you substitute something else from that damaged wall or a chimney? Well I've been experimenting with this design and I think I've come up with a solution. We're going to use more bricks. We're going to use four of these single cavity blocks. Doesn't matter what size they are as long as they're uniform. Nine standard bricks. Here's how it goes together. We're going to put one of these blocks down and we're going to put these bricks right here. There's four of them. We're going to put one right here. That's going to be the bottom of the combustion chamber. Now I'm going to put the first chimney block on top and the placement here is important. We're going to put it right here so it lines up here. Now this first block placement is pretty important because you're going to have a crack right here and we're going to fix it in just a moment. And on the front you have another pretty good sized crack. Now this spacing would cause this stove to not work very well. So here's all we're going to have to do. We're going to take a brick, put it right here like this, and that's going to seal it. In the back here we also have a pretty good sized crack that has to be sealed for this to work. We're going to put another brick in there. So what we've got so far is a pretty solid base. It should be reasonably airtight considering we're not using any mortar. Now I'm going to add another block on top to make the chimney more effective. So as long as we line up everything, it should work fine. We're going to use this two and a half size can. We're going to stick it right in here. The idea is that this will be the draft. This is where we'll put in the sticks and such. I really scored on this gas range grill. It fits perfectly like this, or I can turn it over there it'll work like that. The idea is to be able to put this can on top and boil water. It'll fit nicely and there will be some room around there for the air to circulate but not so much that it cools off the tin can. Lighting this is pretty simple. I'm going to take a couple of handful of just various pieces of wood and toss it in the top. Now after a disaster you'll probably have no problem at all finding wood debris to use in this stove. I'm going to walk around up here on this pine forest floor and pick up a bunch of twigs and sticks. So I'm going to use this uh, infused cotton ball. It's got a lot of Vaseline on it. I'm going to light it with this ferrocerium rod. And there it goes. I'll let it get started a little bit. Now I'm going to stick it in the combustion chamber. Let's see if we can get this thing to go. Well it hasn't been two or three minutes and we've already got flames coming out of the top. We're going to try boiling some water here. Now this is what survival water boiling is going to look like. You're going to start out with whatever can you could find. In this case it was kind of rusty. You're going to use whatever wood you could find. In this case it was wet, deteriorated, and pine. And then you're going to do the best you can. This stove is designed to get you through an emergency. Concrete blocks are not the best material for a stove, but they'll work on a short-term basis. If you want to make a permanent stove using this pattern, use fired field clay tiles or chimney flue. Survival knowledge and practical skills don't weigh anything, and you can take them anywhere. This is SurvivalCommonSense.com. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.